and welcome to Nerdy Unreal Dev. And we're back in the sci-fi hallway to discuss post-processing. Now there's two ways that Unreal does post-processing effects. Uh, there's a volume and there's settings in the camera. So if we go into our camera actor, uh, just so you all know, there's a little pin that lets you just pin the camera view to the corner while you click other things and do things. So that's just a fun little fact. Back to post-processing, if you go into the camera settings under post-process, you'll see uh, there's various options. So we've got bloom. So you can change various things within the uh, camera settings within the camera that'll affect how the render will come out or your animation or whatever you're doing. But it doesn't affect the scene itself. So there's one method. And you see for options, we've got mobile depth of field, bloom, uh, exposure. So if you're not messing with auto exposure and you're changing the exposure settings manually, which is at the moment is more re recommended for some things. Uh, they are changing auto exposure for 4.25. So when 4.25 comes out, definitely expect a video on that. Uh, chromatic aberration, dirt mask, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it describes it as texture that defines the dirt on the camera lens where the light of very bright objects is scattered. No, that sounds weird. Um, I'll probably ma make something uh, about that just because it's very interesting. Uh, camera lens flares, you know, for that Michael Bay effect. Uh, image effects, so we've got Vignette, uh, Grain Jitter. So yeah, we've got some jittery grain going on. Grain intensity. So now this just looks like some old movie thing, but you can see it only looks like that in the camera actor and not out here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what this is. Depth of field, so focal distance, color grading. Uh, so you can change just, yeah, t color grading. Want to make it look like a, one of those movies that don't have color in it. I don't mean black and white. I'm, I'm looking at you, DC movies. <laughs> so all sorts of various options. Now, you also have these options within the post-process volume. This is found under visual effects. Uh, it's a top thing, top item. It's also, if you just look up post-process volume or just volume, you'll eventually find it in this long list. And it's just a little wireframe box. And change, adjust the size. And there's an important saying within the bot, uh, within the post process volume. And that is infinite extent unbound. Whether this volume covers the whole world or just the area inside its bounds. So unchecked, it's just the area inside its bounds. Check it, it does everything. So say if we went up to, let's go back to white balance. So right now it's checked, so it's changing everything in this world. Have some fun, mess with the tint too. But if we go back down here and uncheck that, everything else is normal. But if you move within the box, then you get the uh, post-processing. 
Uh, this is really useful, especially in games where, say, you step into an area and everything changes for the player. And then the player steps back out and the world's normal again. Just throwing out an idea. Um, it's possible, though I don't have the numbers on this, that using a volume uh, bound within an area could be easier on the system than just unbound. However, I don't have the numbers on that. That's just musings. Uh, the volume also has a few other options. Uh, some of you may remember uh, global illumination. So, uh, er. That's weird. Well, this is all ray tracing. <laughs> so, the global illumination is way better if you've got ray tracing going on. The screen space one. So indirect lighting color. Uh, so you've got all sorts of little little extra things to play with, especially if your computer can handle ray tracing. But you also have the color grading, uh, lens, etc. Uh, honestly, bloom and exposure as well as color grading are probably going to be your most used ones. There's just a touch of bloom can just really if change things. Then if say you're working on something and you just like you got the post processing set up but you need it to not be shown. Well, you can uncheck that. Uh da, 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 da. Depending on what it is. Ah, there we go. Tone Mapper. That's what that was. So you can just turn it off um, and then turn it back on when you need it. Uh, this doesn't actually turn it off. It's just showing or not showing. So there you go. That's post-process volume as well as in the camera in Unreal. Uh, Thank you for watching, and just wanted to let you all know, I do read the comments. Uh, I love the suggestions, it definitely helps give me ideas. Uh, there, I'm definitely working on more Niagara videos, especially since uh, there's not a ton of tutorials for Niagara right now. I also, one comment had a really interesting question that I've thought about and I th have some ideas for how it might work, but it's uh, something I'll have to look into a bit more. And also, like, some of you have sp uh, specific questions about how to do things for not necessarily a video, but just for themselves. And, you know, asking others for help is great. Uh, if you have any questions about how you do something in Unreal, shoot me a DM on Twitter. Uh, that's that'll provide a more better that'll provide a better method for communicating and figuring out what's going on. Uh, just make sure to start the DM with "Hi, I'm blah blah blah. I'm asking about how to do this thing in Unreal." Start the DMs like that, otherwise I'll probably ignore them. <laughs> and please donate to my coffee, Kofi. The little donation thing at the end that I put in the description of all my videos, it really, it helps support me as I make more content. And especially if you're asking for help and, and I get back to you about that, that would be, like, really useful. So, yeah. Um, like, subscribe, and donate to my Kofi. Coffee. Thing. <laughs> Thanks for watching.